Hey there, and welcome to Alchemist Camp, where we learn Elixir by building things. This video is the solution to challenge seven, which was to take our Fibonacci module and put it into its own mix project and add tests to it. So to do that, first thing we want to do is open up the terminal. And we'll do mix new fib. Keep the same name. Okay, we've got a new project right up here. Go into that project and look at what it's made for us. We have an example of Fibonacci module. Let's just copy everything from our own into it. And we don't quite want everything we want. Everything but the top. You know, I should have just copied everything. It's all right. All is good. Then everything looks good there. Then we've got a test, which just tests the hello greeter that we added. We don't really need that either. So we'll just replace that with our own test. We'll start with the naive Fibonacci function that we made. Naive Fibonacci base cases. The base cases are one and two. So fib naive of one should be one since that's the first number in the Fibonacci sequence. And the second value should also be one. Erase that and let's see if our test passes. Oh, got a CD into that folder. It does. All right. We'll add some more tests. Uh, we'll test just, just some uh, some non-base cases. That's not the past one. We'll do the naive one first. All right. So the sixth number should be eight, since it's one, one, two, three, five, eight. And the ninth number should be 34. And I already looked up the 17th number before we started, which is 1597. You know, we can't really test any big numbers with the naive function because it's really slow. And the last thing you want is tests that run really slowly. So we'll just go on to testing the, uh, the faster version of Fibonacci. Hit Control D to do a copy paste. Or not to copy paste, but to multi-select. Yep, all the tests pass. And then we'll try a really big number for the faster one. really large number and let's try the 150th Fibonacci number which will be huge so I found this first 150 Fibonacci numbers web page or first 300 I think okay this is the 150th And that passes too. Next thing we want to do is uh, look at our, our timer. This really should be its own module. So we'll make a new Fibonacci module for the timer. The way we do that is we go into our lib and we make a new directory called fib, which is the same as the name of our whole project. Notice fib.ex and then fib at the same level. Inside the fib directory, we will make a new module called time. Actually, timer is a little bit better. Timer.ex, and we make this called fib.timer. And the reason we made this fib.timer is because it's 
inside it's a sub module of the fifth module all right we'll go back here and just copy our timer function into the new module like so and there are a couple of things we have to change now since this module is not where time is defined anymore now we need to write timer dot time if we didn't want to do that we could simply import timer at the top although that's not a good idea to do too much because uh, when you're importing lots of modules that import other modules, then you start running into namespace collisions. Then we'll run IEX and give it a try. Um, in order to load in everything in our mix project, what we do is uh, IEX or if you're in PowerShell IEX, bat dash capital S mix. Oh, right. I, I gotta go into our, our directory and we have the mix file there. So there we go, load it up, and fib.compare. Timer.time2 is undefined. Oh, you know what? I believe we need fib.timer. We need a full namespace. Reload fib. And it's slow, which means it's probably working because the naive function is pretty slow. Yeah, it took just over three seconds, or just under four seconds. Now, it is a bit burdens burdensome to type in fib.timer every time. So I said you could use import in order to just call all the functions in timer directly. Uh, a good middle option is alias fib.timer. And now, anytime we just type timer, it will be the same as if we had typed fib.timer. And we can give this a try, reload, fib, and it still works. All right. Now that this is in its own module, I actually think it looks a bit better if we, if we make it take a variable number of arguments. So we're going to change this to arg list, and then we're going to use kernel dot apply which will call a function and pass it a list of arguments now we're just going to add a, a silly function with an arity 2 just just to see if it works so uh, we'll make an arity 2 version of naive uh, naive a comma b and this will just calculate the Fibonacci of those two numbers added together. So if you put in uh, five and three, it would get you the eighth Fibonacci number. And we'll reload that. And now let's try, oh, we gotta reload the timer. Our list is unused. Arg list. Okay. Fib.timer. We re reloaded. Now let's try fib.timer.time of naive 2. So this is calling the, the 2 arity function on the Fibonacci of 5. And three, so this should get us the eighth. Actually, it's gonna to be too small. Let's get the 15th Fibonacci number. Okay, let's do exactly what I mentioned earlier. We're just going to import fib, and now we should just be able to do timer.time, naive two. Alias fib.timer. There we go. Took one millisecond. Okay, let's that seems a little silly. Um, let's see about the fib of twenty. Took no time at all. Took three. Uh, I'm a little bit suspicious. Oh, that's the same. So let's try Fibonacci of thirty-five. That's going to be much bigger. Now let's try the naive function. I will do twenty-five and ten. Okay, 
looks like there's some amount of caching going on, but it's uh, it's doing pretty much what it should be. Okay, so now that this is a bit more modular, a bit friendlier, we don't need compare anymore. We're gonna put this inside of our tests themselves. So we have our fib test, which is already written and already working fine. When we make uh, when we test another module, we can actually just copy the directory structure we have in lib. So let's put another directory in here that we call fib, and then inside of that, we will make a timer test dot exs. So we'll make a new module, and we'll call this one fib dot timer test. Note that there's no dot between timer and test. And we use xunit dot case and we alias fib and we alias fib dot timer. First thing we want to do is make sure that the timer returns a number, because the timer should always be returning some number of milliseconds. Timer returns a number. Assert is number, and we're going to aim for smaller, uh, smaller times because we don't want to have some really slow times in this. Fib dot naive slash one of ten, and I think that's good enough for that test. One failure. Got to pass that list. Okay. Timer dot time. There we go. And the next thing to test is that the timer works on our strange arity greater than one function. Timer works on arity. Arity just means number of arguments. So this works on functions with more than one argument. Assert is number timer dot time fib dot naive plus two and we'll get the fifteenth or sorry, yes we'll get the fifteenth Fibonacci number here and the end and the most important thing we want to test is the faster function is faster than the naive function. Uh, let's see, we'll make a couple of variables. So the naive time is timer dot time dot naive one of thirty five. And the reason that we've got this syntax is this is just an anonymous function that is the fib dot naive with one argument. Um, then the next thing we do is the same thing for faster time. All right. And then we say that the faster time is greater than the naive time. This is going to fail. That should have failed. Has no effect. Oh, because we didn't assert it. Assert faster time is greater than naive time, and this should fail because the faster time is actually going to be smaller than the naive time. Yeah, the naive version took 349 milliseconds, the faster version took less than one millisecond. So we'll just switch that around. And all the tests are passing. So there you have it. We've made uh, a whole mix project with Fibonacci, which means we could pull other dependencies in using mix.exs like we showed in our last lesson. And it also made it much easier to make tests. We make tests by just putting them in a parallel structure to where the original files are. And we use xunit.case, and then we alias or import whatever modules we need to run them. And we just use assert 
assert is very useful, but of course there are other functions we can use if you want. Go to the Elixir line homepage, go to Docs, and before we've always been clicking into the first option here, the Elixir standard library, there's also XUnit. XUnit is what we're using here. XUnit uh, is a DSL whole set of tools for doing testing. And if you look in here, you can see a bunch of different options for, for what to do. Um, probably functions, uh, actually no, it's in the assertions. That's, that's where you'll find most useful stuff. So assert, certain delta, you can check to see if two numbers are sort of distance from each other. You can assert that something raises an exception um, or that something is received. There's, uh, and then refute is just the exact opposite of assert. Anyway, take a look through this. And until next lesson, happy coding.